So cutting the fabric, we're going to focus on the folded edge of the fabric. And that's where we're going to be, that's what's going to help us guide all of this process. So it's very important when you're cutting um, for quilts to be precise because it helps make sure the whole end quilt works out well, especially when you're doing with the fabric strips and we're piecing those together as full strips because if they get wonky, the whole quilt gets wonky. So take your time with this. Um, You'll probably make some mistakes along the way. I know I always do. Uh, that's why it's always nice to have a little bit of extra fabric around if possible. Or be willing to, you know, just change things up as you go a little bit. If a mistake's made and you need to change up what fabric piece you're using, that's okay. It happens. Um, so you need your quilting ruler. And when you're choosing your quilting ruler, definitely have a look at it and just make sure that it makes sense to you because they all are they all present a little bit differently with how they lay out the grid lines on them. And some of them I found, I look at them and they kind of confuse me, but some of them just make complete sense to my brain. And I've heard this from a few different quilters. So just take your time when you're choosing one to kind of play around with it in the shop or look it up online and make sure that your brain can register how those lines are on that ruler. Um, so we're going to take the fold of our fabric and line it up with one of the horizontal lines on our ruler. And we're going to do just clean up the edge of the fabric to start. And what you're going to find when you are ironing and matching up those selvage edges is that the you'll usually end up having a bit of offsetting on your fabric. And that's very normal. And that's also a really important part to not force. So when you're lining up those selvages, you're not trying to also line up the edge of the fabric as well at the same time because you'll end up with wrinkles and forcing that fold up there. But by just focusing on lining up the selvage edges, um, you're gonna end up with the natural fold of the fabric over here and often some overlapping, some mismatching of the fabric on the edges. So that's perfectly normal and how the fabric often comes off the bolt. Just wanna make sure that you've got that horizontal line lined up on your ruler, lined up against the fold of the fabric. And if you just run your finger along the edge here, you can make sure that you've got both layers of the folded fabric um, cleared by your ruler. So because they're slightly offset, sometimes you can have one hiding underneath and you don't notice it until after you've made the cut and then you waste some fabric. So just make sure that if there's offsetting in your fabric, which there often is when you're cleaning up the edge, that you have both of the layers of the fabric cleared by your ruler. Okay, so we've got, now you're going to just put some pressure down on the ruler. You're going to take your rotary cutter and you're keeping your fingers on the ruler, making sure you're not going to nick them with the rotary cutter. And you place the rotary cutter against the ruler um, in the area where it's not yet hitting the fabric. So you've got your rotary cutter kind of pressing a little lightly against your ruler. You're putting pressure down with your hand and then you're just going to push that rotary cutter away from you and in my case it might just be my size with my hand I don't know my height um, I'm able to put enough pressure down usually that the ruler doesn't move around but if you're finding your rulers moving around a little bit you can just edge your hand forward like stop the rotary cutter kind of hold it there in place and then edge your hand forward on your ruler lift up your hand and move it forward um, in order to keep it in place so that's one option Okay, so we've got the first cut done. The edge of the fabric is done. The next step is we're going to line that edge of the fabric up with one of the parallel lines on your cutting mat. And that's where the combo of the cutting mat and the ruler come in really handy. And then we're going to find the three and a quarter mark on your ruler. In my case, there's actually an extra thick line at the three and a quarter mark, which is very helpful. <laughs> so I'm going to take that three and a quarter mark edge of the ruler. I'm going to line it up with the edge of the fabric and I'm doing, I'm lining up both the edge of the fabric and with the parallel marking on the cutting board. And then I'm going to once again, make a cut, just pressing down on the ruler so that it doesn't move around, going nice and slow. And there we go. We have our first three and a quarter inch piece for the quilt. And you can see, you can't tell where that fold line is on there. 
because it was nice and straight. And now we're going to cut 20 more of these. <laughs> so I'm going to leave you guys to do that over the next week. Um, I'd love to see photos of your cut fabric. I'd love to see what colors you're using, what your plan is. Um, the other thing to do for next week, if you are following, if you're following along with the art gallery pattern, but you're doing um, different colors, lay out your pieces on the floor or a kitchen counter and play around with what order you want them in. And then once you have the order that you want, just go from one side over and lay them on top of each other so that you have them in order for sewing for next week because we are going to be piecing the quilt together next week, which is what quilters call sewing the top of the quilt together. It's called piecing. Um, so for next week, you're going to need your 20 cut strips at three and a quarter inches wide and you're going to need thread. So in week one, I showed what these colors are. So you can go check that out if you'd like. I like to use 50 weight or a fill thread, uh, cotton thread. You can also use polyester if you want. Some quilters will tell you you can't, you technically can. <laughs> um, I just really like working with cotton. And you're, you'll need a sewing machine and a all-purpose needle that's ideally a fresh needle on that machine. If you don't want to do the cutting, you can still go on to my shop and grab some of these pre-cut kits that are available on there. I also have two more of the full caboodle kits with the backing available on there. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be sure to respond to them in the comments. And if there's anything longer, I'll mention it in next week's video. Good luck. You've got this. You can absolutely do it. And I'm excited to see what everybody comes up with for next week.